This webinar tutorial is on pharmacology research. I would like to start by acknowledging the Ghana people, traditional owners of the land from which I'm recording. As I mentioned at the beginning, this particular session is on pharmacology research, particularly uh, in the context of the subject BioP211 and the research assignment for that subject. So the purpose of this particular tutorial is to introduce students to research methods and resources for pharmacology, pharmaceutical drugs, and how those pharmaceutical drugs interact with other drugs and also with um, natural medicine interventions such as uh, foods, herbs, and nutritional supplements. Specifically, this session is going to introduce students to specialized drug databases um, and how to use them to find product information for pharmaceutical drugs which includes information on mechanisms of action, routes of administration, therapeutic uses, adverse effects, and contraindications. The session's also going to introduce you to resources that provide interactions between pharmaceutical drugs and natural medicine interventions such as um, Western herbs or Chinese medicine herbs, foods and nutritional supplements. And finally, there's going to be a brief introduction to uh, some books and ebooks students can use to look at diseases associated with uh, particular drugs, which requires researching um, human physiology and pathophysiology. As I mentioned briefly, this entire uh, video is to support uh, students who are doing BioP211 and the research assignment from BioP211. So these are uh, sections of the assignment description for the research assignments. And the, the five requirements of that assignment, which are going to be answered by this particular session. So this entire session is about how to find uh, the information to answer these questions. So the first topic is about um, the product information of drugs themselves. So students have to choose a particular drug from those covered in the subject content and then define and explain major topics within that product information, such as mechanisms of action, routes of administration, etc. The second aspect is on um, researching the chosen drug and adverse reactions and interactions with natural medicines interventions such as Western herbs, Chinese herbs, um, or nutritional supplements. Um, Finally, there's going to be discussion of the pathophysiology of a particular disease and how that's related to the, the chosen drug. And all of the resources that I'm going to show you are appropriate references to support your academic writing on this particular topic. So this entire session is about giving you the resources to answer the questions for this particular assignment. So to begin the session, I'd like to give a brief introduction to the uh, Endeavour College of Natural Health library resources and how best to find them and use them for your research purposes. So I'd like to start from the Endeavour College of Natural Health electronic learning management system because that's uh, the, the system that most students will be using most of the time. So it's most helpful if you uh, know how to access all these resources from LMS. So um, from ELMS itself, almost all of the content that I'm going to show you can be quickly and easily accessed from the library tab. So of that list, there are 
three uh, different sites that are going to be most useful for this session, and I'll give you a quick demonstration of each. So the first primarily will be the library website, um, which is uh, an umbrella homepage from which you can access all, all of the library resources. The second potentially is the library databases or databases A to Z, which is a platform from which you could access all of the uh, information resources that I'm going to demonstrate. And finally, uh, we'll be accessing the library guides, in particular the bioscience library guides, uh, as that's the most efficient way to find all of this information. So very quickly, the library website or library homepage. So the, the library website or library homepage is the, the umbrella page from which you can access all of the library resources. You, uh, at the top of the page is a, a search for our catalog that could be useful, particularly for looking for uh, books and eBooks within the Endeavor collection. Uh, I won't cover that in this particular session because some of the other methods of accessing those materials are far more efficient. So the, the top bar is a, a, is a search mechanism for the library catalog, and you're most welcome to experiment that with that uh, at your leisure in a variety of different ways. The second tab that I mentioned is the library databases. So that takes you to our list of A to Z databases, which is also accessible from the library homepage. This uh, particular page lists all of the databases that Endeavor subscribes to or recommends that you access. Um, and um, it's most easy, uh, it's easiest to, to search for these alphabetically. So the, the three different databases I'm going to be spending most of this session covering are um, Martindale, which is in our Medicines Complete eBooks subscription. MIMS Online and Natural Medicines. All three of those resources can be accessed from the A to, A to Z databases page. Uh, also, the assignment question itself uh, suggests that you use or requires you to use uh, journal articles, particularly primary research articles to support your academic writing. So you would use Discovery Search or some of our other databases such as ProQuest or Science Direct to find that information, but that is not going to be covered in this particular session. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on three resources that are less commonly used uh, for this particular session. So the third type of information source that the Endeavor Library staff provides are our library guides. Uh, once again, the library guides can be accessed from the Endeavor website or the, uh, the library website or the um, library homepage under the library guides. But generally for students, it's more efficient to access it from ELMS because that's what you're using all the time for your subject content. So, this particular session is on pharmacology and most relevant to a bioscience subject, BioP211, on pharmacology. So almost all of the content that I'm going to be showing for the rest of the session is going to be from the biosciences homepage. So the Bioscience Library Guide has been developed by the, uh, the liaison librarian for the bioscience department to provide quick and efficient access to information sources for bioscience subjects in particular, but bioscience in general. So whilst I will sh be showing you that there are a variety of different tabs within the guide itself, there are two that I'm going to concentrate on most specifically. So the first is an assignment help page in which there is very specific information on the resources that are most helpful for BioP211 and the assignment, uh, the research assignment from BioP211. Uh, Bio I'll also going to be briefly demonstrating the books tab 
which is the most efficient way to access books on pathology and pathophysiology, as well as general texts on pharmacology. Finally, I'll be quickly um, showing you the references tab for referencing examples for bioscience content in general, but also specifically the databases that we're covering in this particular session. Library guides page, if we click on bioscience, this shows you the bioscience homepage. We scroll down slightly under contacts. This identifies the liaison librarian for biosciences, Benton Lewis. And if you would like to contact him directly, this particular tab is a quick link to his email address. There are a variety of other tabs. Um, so books, uh, relevant databases, journals, and apps, additional resources, which are mostly web pages and uh, some video resources, referencing, and assignment help. The two, well, actually the three tabs that I'd like to concentrate mostly on today are the assignment help tab primarily, books, and referencing. But to start with, we're going to be looking at the assignment help tab. As you can see in the central column, there's a, a section for Bio211 assignment tips. And the, the default tab is uh, assignment links to databases. And these three databases are most relevant and most useful for the BioP211 research assignments, and I'll be showing you how to use them in turn. The first of those resources that I want to show you is um, Martindale, The Complete Drug Reference, which is an ebook that is formatted as a searchable database within our Medicines Complete ebook subscription. So, one of the reasons that I suggest using Martindale first, and while I'm, why I'm covering it first, is that it's a very useful place to start your research on pharmaceutical drug information. Now, one of the reasons why it's useful, a useful place to start is that Martindale searches, by, searches drugs by the generic name or their drug class, rather than searching by specific pharmaceutical products unlike some of our other resources. So for that reason, Martindale is a great place to start. Also, Martindale provides most of the information that you might need about the drug product, not all of it, but most of it. And it also provides excellent uh, links to the research that they've used to support their monograph. And it might be useful for you to view uh, that research, particularly uh, the primary sources within that research. And they give quick links to the abstract of that research on PubMed. So it can be really handy for that reason as well. If we go to databases, I can click on the Medicines Complete ebook link because that's the hosting site for Martindale, the complete drug, re drug reference. I should say, um, whilst it's not going to show you the process in this particular session. Normally when you access any of our um, online information sources, whether they be databases or eBooks, you will be required to log into those resources. So the, the login for any of our databases or eBooks is the same as your ELMS login. So your student number is your username, and then the password is whatever password you've set up for ELMS access. That said, this is the Medicines Complete uh, platform page. If we scroll down slightly, you can see the two resources that um, we subscribe to within this platform. The one that I want to look at today is Martindale, the Complete Drug Reference. It can be a little bit tricky to, to access the, um, the drugs within this page. So I'll show you the process to, to access the, the most efficient way of searching it. So from Martindale, the complete drug reference, we then click on drugs and ancillary substances. Then 
the, the default setting for, for searching for drugs and ancillary substances is set to by therapeutic use. That's not the most efficient way of looking for information. So we're going to change that search option to searching by drug name, which is much, much easier for our processes for this particular assignment. Now, the drug that I'm going to use as an example for each of these databases is warfarin because it's a commonly used drug, but it's also a drug that has potentially dangerous interactions with a variety of other drugs, but also a variety of natural medicine interventions, uh, particularly uh, herbs, um, foods and, and nutritional supplements. So warfarin is the example that we're using today. So to find that, I just click, click on W and then click on Warfarin itself. So this gives us a comprehensive monograph on Warfarin and the different areas of information that the monograph covers can be found with um, very quick links. So we've got general overview of warfarin itself. Um, then we can go into uses in administration, adverse effects, treatment of adverse effects, interactions, pharma pharmacokinetics, etc. Please note that here, these are quick links to the references that um, Martindale has used to um, to actually come up with this information. So if you're looking for primary sources of information or um, primary and secondary research on this topic, you could use these quick links to go into the abstract of that article on PubMed. Note that this is an abstract only, so you probably couldn't use that article itself from PubMed because for academic writing, you're not supposed to reference anything that you can't have, uh, can't access the full, te the, the full text of, but it can be useful as, uh, as a quick way to start your research. So you could then copy and paste that title and search our database to see if you can access it. But really quick links to at least the abstracts of the research that they've used to support this um, particular monograph. The second resource that I want to show you is MIMS Online. This is also an excellent uh, database of pharmaceutical drugs, but MIMS Online is designed to search for specific drug products. Whereas Martindale searches for general drug names, such as Warfarin, um, MIMS Online will search for brand name products that um, are warfarin or warfarin sodium. So in general, Martindale's is easier to start your research with, but MIMS Online is much more specific and provides considerably more information about specific drug products. Uh, in general, uh, it's a good idea to do a quick um, bit of research to find the, the most common products for your chosen drug so that when you're searching MIMS online, you can be searching by a product instead of necessarily the, the general name because sometimes that can be a little bit challenging in MIMS. So possibly just do a quick Google search on your, your chosen drug and see what products come up. Um, from that search and then use those products to search MIMS. Also in general, I'll show you in a moment, but to get the complete information about a particular drug, uh, we need to look at the, the full PI or full product information, but I'll be showing you that in a moment. Also worth noting, um, MIMS will show interactions between drugs and other pharmaceutical drugs but it very rarely shows interactions between pharmaceutical drugs and um, natural medicines um, interventions, such as uh, 
foods, herbs, or supplements. We needed to use a different resource for that. But that said, let's have a look at MIMS Online. From the Assignment Help tab, we go down to the database section, we can click on MIMS Online. So from here, I'll use the, the search bar and once again, use Warfarin as my example. This is actually a little bit easier to search than many drugs. So Warfarin is commonly used. So by searching Warfarin, it gives me two products that are specifically versions of Warfarin sodium. So I'm going to use the top one, Coumadin tablets, as the example for this particular session. So if we go into Coumadin tablets, this the, the, the first thing that you will see is the abbreviated PI or abbreviated product information. That might not give you all of the information that you need for your assignments questions. So we need to go into the full PI or full product information. As you can see, that is a much more comprehensive uh, monograph on that particular product, that particular version of Warfarin Sodium. But that page will give you all of the information that you need to answer that first question from the assignment description on the products and all of the different um, aspects of that product the assignment is asking you to um, explain. So um, whilst it's a little bit more challenging to search than Martindale, the quality of the information it provides is considerably uh, more comprehensive and this particular um, database will give you all of the information that you need to, to answer that first part of the assignment question. As I mentioned earlier, MIMS will rarely, if ever, uh, provide information on interactions between pharmaceutical drugs and natural medicine inter interventions, particularly herbal medicine and foods and nutritional supplements. For that information, we need to use a different resource. Uh, one of our most useful databases is natural medicines. Natural medicines um, has a, a few different tools that are incredibly useful. Um, what I want to cover on this particular session is the interaction checker, um, which is a tool natural medicines provides. Um, I'd also like to mention, and we'll demonstrate when we get into it, that when you use the interaction checker, the way it lists the, uh, the types of interactions is by category first, major, moderate, and minor interactions, and then alphabetically by uh, different um, interventions within that particular category. Um, finally, I want to show you um, the, the quick links to the, the references from natural medicines and how similarly to, to Martindale, you could use those quick links to go into primary and secondary research to support your own academic writing. That said, let's get into natural medicines. So once again, from the assignments help tab, we can click on natural medicines. On natural medicines, uh, the, the tool that I want to show you is the interaction checker, which is here directly on the homepage. This is a really simple and user-friendly search tool. You could search alphabetically, um, click on W and then scroll down until you find Warfarin. To be honest though, it's a really long and comprehensive list. So it's much easier to search um, using the search bar. That takes us straight to Warfarin. And then in order to start the interaction checker, um, actually looking for interactions, we click on the one we want and that adds Warfarin to selected agents. Just quickly, um, another way that you could use this would be by adding 
multiple agents to your selected agents. So if, for example, you're um, in clinic and seeing a particular patient and they've um, given you information about a variety of different medications they're on, you could potentially add each of those agents into the selected agents and then the results summary is going to list all of the interactions um, that could happen with each of the selected agents that you've added. Uh, in this case that we're only looking at one though, we're only looking at warfarin and all of the things that might interact with warfarin adversely. So as you can see, there are a lot of different foods, herbs, and nutritional supplements that interact with warfarin potentially, and quite a few that have major interactions. So once again, um, the interactions are always listed in natural medicines from major to moderate, finally to minor. So the most significant interactions are going to be listed first. Uh, and then within that, it's alphabetical. So for your assignment, you're asked to choose um, some of the interventions from your preferred modality and explain how um, that particular intervention, most likely a herb or a supplement, interacts with your chosen drug. So in this case, um, you could look at American ginseng, for an example. So that's the third one down. If we then click on view details, uh, the checker will give us an explanation for exactly how uh, American ginseng interacts with warfarin, particularly the product Coumadin of warfarin sodium. So that gives you the explanation of how it actually interacts. Also note, these numbers are links to the references within natural medicines. So if we click on that uh, number, that will take us to natural medicines references. Note that for the vast majority of references, they have links to the abstract of those articles, almost always on PubMed. So often this will be available as an abstract, not in this case, but as a, a quick, uh, probably because it's quite old, it's 1997 that that original research came from. So if we use uh, the other one as an example, Okay, so from here, once again, we can view abstract. And that gives us the abstract to a more recent article that one's from 2004. So once again, this is the abstract. You might not necessarily be able to access the full text here, but you could take this information and search our subscribe databases to see if we provide full text access to it. In general though, um, I mostly wanted to point out that natural medicines is an extremely useful tool uh, and not only can you find the information that you need to answer the relevant questions for your assignment in natural medicines, but you can also provide quick links to the research that they've used. Finally, I'd like to mention that if you would like more information about the particular herb or the particular intervention that you're studying in its interactions with your chosen drug. You can also quickly link to the herbal monograph or the, the monograph on, on your um, intervention in natural medicines. Um, most of the time students would be using the foods, herbs and databases uh, section of natural medicines to be searching for herbal monographs or monographs on foods and uh, nutritional supplements. But in this case, we can use it in reverse. We can use the interaction checker to look at our chosen drug and all of the different herbs that inter it interacts with. And then once you've found an interacting herb that you want to study, 
you could look at the, the monograph for that herb itself. So we've got American ginseng and many of the different areas that you need to research for your pharmaceutical drug. So adverse effects, drug interactions, um, supplement interactions, uh, pharmacokinetics, mechanism of action. So almost all of the information that you're required to present for your pharmaceutical drug, you would also be able to find that type of information for any particular herbs or foods or supplements that you're comparing a pharmaceutical drug with. So, and once again, all of these are links to references and the vast majority of those references have links at least to the abstract in PubMed. So Natural Medicines is a fantastic resource for a variety of different reasons. Those three databases were the primary content that I wanted to cover in this particular session, but there are a few other resources that would be very useful for you, both as different information sources, but also on how to find information and how to reference that information. So the three different areas that I wanted to discuss as other resources are, are one, um, a brief mention of our um, journal databases and how you would go about finding information about how to use them to find journal articles, particularly primary and secondary sources. Um, then I'd like to quickly ben mention um, some of the, the books and ebooks that you would use to um, find more general information on pharmacology or more specific information about particular diseases as they relate to your chosen drug and the, the physiology and pathophysiology relevant to that particular disease. And finally, we're going to cover referencing and reference ex examples for how to reference all of these resources. For this particular session, I'm not going to go into the databases themselves or demonstrate how to use them. Uh, however, on this particular page, there are links to some of the specific library video tutorials on those particular topics. So from this page, you can also see quick links to the videos, EBSCO Discovery, Basic Searching, and Primary and Secondary Resources. So both of those videos comprehensively cover those topics, how to search um, our most comprehensive uh, journal database, EBSCO Discovery, to find uh, journal articles. And the second one is how to differentiate between primary and secondary resources and the common types of journal articles that are primary and secondary resources. So particularly when you're looking for your journal articles, if you need some assistance with that topic, then I'd suggest having a look at these videos, EBSCO Discovery Basic Searching and Primary and Secondary Resources. The other major topic that I want to cover is um, books to be searching pharmacology in general, but more particularly pathology, pathophysiology, and information about diseases relevant to your chosen drug. So if we go into books, this particular page is primarily ebooks, but there are some books that are not available as ebooks. So whilst almost all of the, the, the links to books that you can see are specifically to ebooks, there are a couple that are not. So this particular page is organized by disciplines within the bioscience field. So anatomy and physiology, chemistry, pathology, pharmacology, and clinical examination. So the two areas that we want to look at for this particular assignment are pharmacology in general, though you probably don't need as much general pharmacology for this assignment um, as with many other aspects of uh, pharmacology, but you do specifically need information on diseases and uh, the best ways to find information on diseases are in pathology and pathophysiology texts. So whilst this is a link to your prescribed reading for pharmacology, you may not need that for this ass assessment, but the pathology books you will need. 
So Porth's pathophysiology, which is one of our primary prescribed readings for pathology uh, subjects such as BioC211. However, Porth's pathophysiology is not available to us as an ebook. So this is a link to that particular book in our catalog. So you'd see a catalog record with the availability of that particular book on each campus. Unless you have convenient access to campus and want to actually borrow the, the physical print version of that book, which you're most welcome to do, but, but unless you actually want access to the print book, I'd suggest using um, some of the other titles that are also useful for um, clinical medicine and pathophysiology and are available as ebooks. So the two books that I would suggest would be most useful and most conveniently accessible are Davidson's Principles and Practice of Medicine and Gould's Pathophysiology for Health Professions. Of those two, I'd probably suggest using Gould's because that's specifically a, um, a pathophysiology text, but you would also be able to find information upon, uh, uh, about the relevant diseases in Davidson's. And a little bit further on, I'll show you that we have an example of exactly how you would reference Davidson's. But either way, those are the two resources that I would uh, suggest using to find information on your disease. Probably Gould's first, but um, but Davidson's would be equally as good. The next thing that I wanted to mention was referencing, specifically how to reference these particular resources. So this particular page on the bioscience page has a lot of the, the content that you would find um, in almost all of our, um, our supplementary resources. Um, and all of the, the comprehensive amount of referencing support content that we have. But I'd like to point you towards some very specific referencing examples. So if we scroll down in referencing examples, there is, as I mentioned, um, an example of exactly how you would reference the ebook version of Davidson's Principles and Practice of Medicine. Please note though that for APA referencing, you are required to use a hanging indent. This format does not allow me to, to actually show you a, um, a, a hanging indent in a particular way. So normally that indent is far, far too modest, but uh, I just want to, to indicate that that's definitely something that you could use. If you use Davidson's, that's almost exactly how you would reference it. The only thing that's lacking slightly is the hanging indent. Otherwise, it's a, a perfect reference for that particular resource. More particularly though, if we go into the databases, each of the three databases that we've covered, um, you'll find examples of how to correctly reference them in this particular section. So the three that we covered are Martindale, MIMS, and Natural Medicines. These are the formats for how you would probably reference them. Note though that this is, um, Warfarin has been updated since this particular page was created. So I can show you and will show you at the end of this session, the exact references for the, the two sites that I looked at today. But as an example, how you would actually format these references, these are correct. The third one, natural medicines, is a little bit different. This reference example is how you would reference um, a herbal monograph within natural medicines. What we looked at though was a little bit different. It was the interaction checker within natural medicines. So if we scroll down slightly, there's this area that tells us that databases have specialized sections and tools, and they're referenced in a slightly different way. So this particular reference is from um, one of the, the tools, in this case, the nutrient depletion checker. So if we go to natural medicines and back to the natural medicines homepage, this would be a reference for 
the nutrient depletion tool. What we want to reference is the interaction checker tool. So going back to our referencing example, this reference would actually be um, interactions colon space warfarin because we're searching for warfarin or we're referencing the search for warfarin within natural medicines interaction checker. But other than that, that is the correct format for how you should reference this particular resource. I will mention very briefly that the references for this particular session are the three um, pieces of content that I researched in those particular databases. So for MIMS, we were looking at um, Coumadin, which is a version of warfarin sodium. Um, in natural medicines, um, we're looking for interactions warfarin. And finally, in Martindale, this is the most recent version of uh, warfarin in Martindale. So these three references are precisely how to reference the most recent content on those topics in those three databases. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, the three different ways of contacting us I'd suggest are to either contact the liaison librarian for the subject area most relevant to your question. So in this case, uh, we're looking at uh, bioscience content and the bioscience subject bio P211. So you'd be most welcome to contact the bioscience librarian, uh, the bioscience liaison librarian, Benson Lewis. Um, you could also book a consultation with any of the library staff. Uh, those consultations are usually for most more complex questions. So often um, how to go about conducting research or overviews of your referencing or any other sort of complex topic that you, you might want information on. Much better to actually book a consultation and generally you could either have a consultation either in person on campus or we can create a, uh, a Zoom session for you fairly quickly and easily, but generally a good 24 hours notice um, is, is required. And finally, there's the virtual librarian service, uh, which is a virtual platform that allows you to either use an automated service to answer quick queries or to um, chat with a virtual librarian who is available for consultation, um, generally Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern stand, uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time, um, but I'll go over that further in a moment. Bioscience Library Guide. On the homepage of that guide, you'll see a badge with the Bioscience Liaison Librarian, Benton Lewis. And as I showed earlier, that is a quick link to uh, Benton's email address. So if you have a bioscience related question, feel free to get in contact with the liaison librarian and generally um, he can respond within 24 hours in a normal working week. Or if you ask a question over the weekend, he'll get back to you first thing Monday in most cases. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to, um, if we go to back to ELMS, if you go to the help tab, there is a consultations tab. So in order to book a consultation with the librarians, go to consultations, scroll down to the very bottom of the page. Uh, the librarians are last, but certainly not least. And from that page, you would click book now. I won't show you that because my view of that, um, that particular process is very different from what a student would view. But uh, if you click that option, it will give you a variety of different um, slots that are available for you to book for each of the, the campus librarians. So to book a consultation, click that Book Now tab from the Help Consultations section. And please uh, give 24 hours notice before you would like the consultation. Finally, uh, the virtual librarian service. 
So from the library homepage, at the very bottom right hand corner of the page is a chat box icon. So if you click that particular icon, it is um, access to the Endeavor Virtual Librarian service. So the first part of that section and the first questions you'll be asked are your name, and then you'll be asked whether or not you want to use the uh, the automated system, the, uh, the Virtual Librarian bot system, or whether you would like to speak to someone, in this case, the, the virtual librarian. So you would be able to use the automated system for quick and simple questions at any time. However, to speak to someone, to speak to the virtual librarian, that service is only available from Monday to Friday, um, 10 p.m. until 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So once again, if you want to speak to the virtual librarian, that would be Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. That is the uh, the information that I want to convey in this particular session. The only other thing that I want to show you again to finish on is once again, these are the references for the information that I use for this particular session. Those are the three um, information sources within the three databases, and that is how you would go about referencing. But if you have any questions, please contact us.